in our Sunday spiritual meeting, right? We're going to have a, a conversation as well, what we always do. Inspired in one of the topics from the Gospel according to Spiritism. And we're going to talk about the ego today, which is a nice conversation, right? And uh, before we start, I think we might as going to do some reading for us to get in the mood. I'm going to read a passage from the book Happy Life by Jenny Berkowitz. So the message goes like this. The wounds of the soul are the most mortifying. External injuries heal easily. Inner ones take much longer. Faith in the waters of faith in God, of patience, humility, forgiveness, and love. Prevent hatred, selfishness, rebellion, rebellion, or sorrow from bruising your soul. Many physical ailments originate in the spirit wonder by emotional unrest or the caustic effect of moral loss. Safeguard your inner workings from the relentless assault of life and through responsibility. With this message, since we are here for our souls, for the healing of our souls, our emotional, Course, all that will affect our body, our physical body. So everything starts in our souls, in our spirit. So that's from where it should start. If it's a physical, it's just a reflection of what's going on in our spiritual body. With that in mind, we are here for this reason. Through these messages, positive, positive feelings and thoughts, that we can put in action. Emotion. So that's how we heal. in the name of Jesus, our guide, our spiritual guide, to help us to see this morning what's hurtful for the soul to heal and Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Amara, for getting started. And as always, so we're going to talk about, you know, some inspiration from the Gospel of to Spiritism. And, and chapter 10 is kind of where we're based today. And we're going to, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm very interested, something that interests me, psychology. I think we have some people that are specialists in the area here today. But um, we have evolved a lot in terms of the physical sciences, like physics, chemistry, because um, uh, our society has been, I mean, really blessed with all these technologies that changed everything, right? 
uh, from the internet to the machines, the cars, the space shuttles. Hopefully, in a few more years, we're going to have people living in Mars. And, I mean, we have this amazing progress in terms of the physical sciences, right? Um, and, uh, and we have been capable of doing am amazing things. But when it comes to the human understanding, when it comes to understanding the human being, things have been much slower, right? And there's a good reason for that, I think, um, because the experimentations with humans are much more limited, right? So every time we do, uh, this is a good thing, by the way. I'm not, I'm not saying anyway against that because uh, um, we have to be careful every time we experience with humans because we understand the value of the human life today much more than we use in the past, right? In the past, we were not as careful and we treated humans in a way that wouldn't be probably the most appropriate. So, so it's natural that the the. Uh, the experimentations with humans are much more limited and regulated. But still, we're part of nature. We have to understand more. And I think we, the quest of understanding the human being is far from over. And we're, uh, we, that's what we see, right? So, so far, we understand that even more than that, humans are uh, transcend the body, which is something that science has not yet put a finger on it. But the signs are all over us. But the good thing is it's, we have to be careful. Because exper experimenting with human beings is way more complicated than it is with physical things, right? With atoms. I was thinking, I was joking a few days ago with somebody that we built like those gigantic um, accelerator, particle accelerators that put atoms in there and they go to the speed of light and we destroy them. And I was thinking, nobody cares about the atoms. <laughs> So nobody cares about. So I, I, this this thought never came to me before. I, I I heard about the particle accelerators like a million times, but this week week for some reason I was thinking about this thought subject. And oh my goodness, there's no society protecting atoms, right? Because we don't care. We just did. But that's amazing because we can see the, how the energy uh, breaks apart. It's, for science, it's amazing to have a particle accelerator, right? And it costs billions of dollars to do that, and 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 much these huge machines, right? But for a moment, I, I was thinking, what if the atoms are, oh my goodness, and for a moment, I felt bad for the atoms <laughs> being destroyed. And uh, it's funny, this, this is how the way it goes. But humans, it's the same. We cannot put us in machines and figure out how we work. Or at least, that's not the idea, because, you know, we are humans, right? We understand that. But then how we evolve, how we, uh, how we learn more about ourselves, and that's the problem. I guess we have to voluntarily, voluntarily, join our own research on ourselves. And that's the thing. Right now, and that's I think well about all about what we do. So in spiritism, we propose that we join this journey, that we become our own subjects in our own research to understand who we truly are. So it's participatory. So we have to engage. And I think that's what we're doing here. Uh, that's that's the way I see myself. I'm engaged in this process to try to understand myself better. So I become um, a, whatever better person means to you or to me. To me, I want to be happy. I want to be more, uh, I cooperate. I want to build things around me. I want to be a, a force for good in my society, in, in, in whatever environment God has placed me in. But it might change depending on where we are, right, which person is. But one topic that fascinates me a little bit is, in a, and I, you know, I'm far from understanding it completely, but is, is the thing about the ego, the thing about the ego. And I was learning a little bit about this uh, this past week, and uh, it's amazing the way they define the ego. Um, as this it's, ego is this sense, apparently, this experience that we have from the moment we begin our journey in the body, right? And it's it's the sense of who I am, who am I, right, is the perspective that I develop usually based on my experiences throughout all my incarnate life. And uh, I was even uh, checking um, Arudu Dutra, uh, I was talking a little bit about that and talking about, if you th he was just even making a comparison about like, imagine like a baby, because we start physical life, we don't remember that, but it was nine months or somewhere around that, that we all went through. We all went through. We were in our mom's bellies, right? And we, we started our journey in the in the flesh there. We spent months there, right? I don't know about you, but some people remember way back. 
their uh, early uh, stages of their life. I don't. I only remember things up after I was six or seven or something like that that, that I can consciously recall. But that, those experiences all built us. The experiences, and I think now psychologists can map pretty well, a lot of the things that happened in the, that time have a tremendous impact in who we are. And that's through the ego. Because, like, for instance, imagine you had a loving mom. A family that was welcoming you, it wanted you to be there, you were planned, you were embraced, right? So those nine months were amazing, and uh, I mean, the body of, you know, our mom's body gave us nutrition, oxygen, everything we needed. It was warm and fuzzy, and probably if the emotions were well balanced around us, that was an amazing place to go, to be, right? It was an amazing place to be uh, inside your mom, right? Connected to, your, to the mom's body. And then, eventually, sooner or later, it might happen. Thanks for the moms that carry those babies around, right? Eventually, they go out. Eventually, you're pushed into this new world. And now, you have to eat. You have to digest food. Now, you have to breathe. Now, starts the struggle to actually start developing uh, interaction with this environment. And you have to start doing. You have to become more active. And to a certain degree, you, you come from an amazing place to a more hostile place. And that's the beginning, just the beginning of the journey, right? In interacting with this physical world around us. So the sense of ego is, it seems to be developed, like this idea that who am I? And it's very well connected, extremely connected to the body, right? To the experiences you have. And all the experience we have had through our lives kind of shaped it, right? And um, many people, if you don't understand that sometimes we confuse ourselves with our ego we think in the ego right because that, like first i'm going to give you an example throughout your experience let's say let's say when you become when you were an early teenager hopefully an early teenager not earlier you had a some sort of relation romantic relationship with your first partner right the first person you had a, a crush or a romantic relationship right Let's say the person was a very balanced individual as well, for some reason, that was a miracle, and that was another teenager that was very balanced, emotionally balanced. That was an amazing experience. You might not have married that person, but it was a good thing. You had a good time together, and things went worked well. It was, it was nurturing, but eventually maybe it has been over, but in a very balanced way. Wouldn't it be amazing? So your perspective of relationships become tainted by that. You expect people, oh, he or she thought about me. He or took care of me, right? And it was a nurturing relationship. So your ego learns that. Your experience passed through that, right? Well, that was the good scenario. Let's say the not so good scenario where you actually get an immature teenager or whatever. The other person was not into it or didn't even like you or didn't even have... A, a relation, a connection with you, or exploited you in some other ways. Who knows? What happened to you? Oh, that hurt. That hurt. That experience was not good. So I didn't feel good. That marks us as well, right? In that we carry that perception, that memory. We might carry it for the rest of our lives, but if we are not aware of it, right? Who are the incredibly powerful people to shape our experience? Whoever raised us. If we were raised by our parents, our parents had an oversized, tremendously powerful influence in our experience. To the point that we are a lot like our parents. There's a lot in us that uh, have to do with our parents. It's sometimes hard to, to know, right? Sometimes we don't, we don't even think about that. But as we mature sometimes, we can see like, oh my goodness, I'm just like my mom or dad in a certain thing, right? And we don't realize that, but that's the shaping of the experiences early on. And if we were lucky and we got balanced parents and we got, you know, a family that was well organized, uh, stable, we, it was amazing. But what if we didn't? What if our parents were struggling or if our parents were you know, struggling with all the different challenges of imbalancing emotions or, or, or struggling, who knows, in what in sense of a human being can go through. There we go. We went into, uh, through that experience as well. But the key thing 
And I think that's the, the message. That's the, one of the key arguments is that, that the ego is not, for us, especially for us spiritists, when we think about consciousness as a, as a thing that transcends the body, is the awareness that the ego is not you. The ego is a powerful force in you. And that's what we do when we mature. Like, for instance, understanding the influence of our parents is something that eventually, if you mature and you become, and you get to know them as people, because we don't know our parents when we are young, they are like these entities, right? These things that transcend life. Imagine life without them, right? So, but then when you mature, when we become older and we become more experienced in life, we see that they're people, just like you and me and like everybody else. They have their challenges, their limitations, their fear. They, and then we start working on that. Yet there's many people that go through their entire life without ever realizing that, still seeing the parental figure as that element of the entity, right? And sometimes, if it's good, it's a good model, fantastic. But most of the time, our parents have imperfections as well. And sometimes we never feel, we never even we're not never even aware of the possibility of healing those things. And I think the awareness of the ego, the awareness of this experience, is one of the levers to spiritual experience, or one of the levers to maintain us in a suffering condition that we never heal. Because if some of those experiences that the ego had, right, some of those experiences were negative, were not positive, were, were destructive in certain, certain ways, unless, unless we understand and equate them and put them in the right place and give the right to people that did that, um, um, to be the way they were, because that's, that's the way it is, and we, detach ourselves from that, we never heal. We never uh, move, we, we never have the strength, right, to put things in balance the way we want, right? And I think that discussion, in a, in a sense, if you look into the gospel, if you look into the, the teachings of Jesus, of course, you know, this was 2,000 years ago, when you go into, for instance, the forgiveness, how important is in the gospel forgiveness, right? Is to forgive the, the, all the harm that was done to you, right? That's exactly the process of being aware of the ego. Because all the hurt, we, we can, uh, you can say that, oh, people that hurt me don't, don't do anything to me. They, no, 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 all the things that are done to me just don't get to me. Think twice. They do. They do. They affect us. I was, by the way, I was talking to my my coming here today, my kid was actually uh, he was interacting with uh, one of his friends, right? And he sometimes he does that, like he's very like rude, like so. He's talking to you, ask, ask him to do something, and he tells you, he tells me like, oh, I want to do it, but I don't care, I don't care, I don't care thing, right? So I don't care, and I, he doesn't see much when he does that to me, right? But then he was interacting with one of his friends, right? And the friend told him the same thing. He was saying like something, I don't know about a game or something. And, uh, and then the friend said to him, oh, I don't care. And he felt good, bad. And I told him, do you see the difference? And he told me, I think he's mad. Why? See, the experiences, that's how we grow. That's how we understand. So, of course, for him right now, he, when he does it, he doesn't feel it. He doesn't think he's being mad when he does it, but when he's done to him. So, we all are touched by all the people around us. If you assume you're not, you eventually will be led to that experience. And eventually you will see that we do. We are all interacting with each other, consciously or unconsciously. The secret of uh, the gospel, the secret of happiness, the secret of balance, is being aware of that. It's not being immune. Nobody's immune. And actually, we're not designed to be immune. We are designed to be a social species, to be, to be social beings. Everything about us is designed to interaction, is designed to make us be together. And never been so intense as it is now. There's like 8 billion of us incarnated on Earth right now. You cannot be alone, right? There's going to be somebody nearby, right? So the interaction is needed. But now, more than ever as well, the experiences are so intense 
they're happening so much, so so much, in such a speed, in such intensity, that now we're really invited into what we call the spiritual growth, which is this awareness of myself, awareness of where I want to be, what awareness of all the emotions that I have inside of me, and working on them. So the gospel, in my, you know, if we would put it in terms of modern psychology, right? So we could see that it's spirituality in a way is the ability to be aware of our ego, our perception of self, and work towards a more balanced dealing with whatever happened to us, right? With whatever happened to us. Because sooner or later, sooner or later, we all will have experiences that we don't want to have. No matter how beautiful the family you might have come into, whatever beautiful your life might have been so far, uh, eventually life will give you an experience that will be amazing. Imagine somebody that was born in Ukraine and had a wonderful family, had wonderful friends, wonderful work, nothing happened to them. This week happened to them. Why not? Right? Just happened. Just a war in your back in backyard. Right? Shaking you out of that. So sooner or later, if we haven't had that experience, we'll have it. So taming, I'm gonna use the word taming. I don't know if that's a good way to put it, but uh, but let me do it. Forgive me for that. But taming the ego is probably the most important task of spiritual growth. We're gonna go towards taming those instinctive, natural, positive reactions that we have that saved us probably the ego before we were aware. Probably like in you know ten thousand, twenty thousand, hundred thousand. I will go back for uh, back for. Uh, our species being in our life, the ego is probably fundamental. If you learn that some hurts you, don't go there. If that animal bites you, don't go there. Or if you go, you know, this is a, an amazing adaptation to the environment you're in, where you, you're in. So it saved us. It made us as a species evolve. But now we are transcending. There's another leap of evolution. Now we're evolving into thinking, intelligent beings that not only shape the environment around them, around us. We have the power to transform everything. Earth's ours now, right? We make it whatever we want. We are building world. And in, hopefully in a few more years, we're going to be shaping a new planet. We're no longer that animal that needed to survive and needed to go away from, from, from the predator or just find food to leave, to stay here. Now we are in a completely different stage. But many of us still struggle living that state. Survival, but that's where not you're not going to find happiness there. You'll find survival. Right? Happiness is in the emotion. Happiness is not happening. Happiness is not in the outside. Is the inside. Is in the dealing with all the elements of my mind. And uh, there's they talk about the other components of the mind as well, like the deep, uh, the deep me, the deep self, and uh, there's, and I think there's going to be a lot of, as we understand the, 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 eventually when the soul be, or the sphere, whatever this thing is going to be called by science, is found, there's going to be probably many layers that are going to um, be there and unpacked, right? But I think the emergency work we have to do right now is the ego. It's like the, the high priority that we all are dealing right now and is giving us the most bang for our buck in terms of controlling is this right now pack of experiences that came to us and shaped who we are um, right now. With that in mind, uh, I think that's kind of the, the message we have for today. You want to do this with the, with, in the recording? Yeah, I have a question. Okay. Because you said earlier that for spiritual uh, ego is not ourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, family or uh, self that is not ourselves. Well, what transcends, I don't know. Well, in the sense, I think what, what the, the way uh, I was I was trying to capture this ego is is is, is more like um, the thing that's shaped to the body, to the experience we all have to go through no matter what, right? Is it was the sense of self, right? But it is ourselves. Our spiritual mm. self. No, it wouldn't be. So the ego would be a kind of um, 
imagine if you are not aware of spirituality at all, right? Imagine you, uh, uh, you, this is not a concept you're entertaining, right? So fundamentally, uh, you would live in the ego based on the experiences you have been gone through, right? Like for instance, if I live for my sensations, if my goal is to have sensations, I'm living in the ego because I, I, I'm trying to maximize my, my sensations, like pleasure, or like everything that has to do with the body. That's sort of where the ego lives, right? It's, uh, it's the sense of my experiences, my sensorial world that surrounds me right now, right? And many people live there. It's, it's just that's the, way, that's the way we live. We live in that, in that ego. And that ego, well, it gets all the experience. What if I get sick? There you go. My ego allows, you know, it's completely because my body is dysfunctional, right? That's it. So my ego is completely destroyed right now. Because that's my body. That's what I am. All the sense, all the e, all the sense, all the perceptions around me would be based on the on the body thing. So that would be the ego, the sense of it, uh, the sense of the experience I, I I develop throughout my interactions in life. In a sense, um, that might be you, you might be talking about an ego as a sense of person. That might be more complicated, but this ego is more simple. Is more is is more is this way of dealing with the ego, or defining the ego is really circumscribed to the experience I had in the flesh. We all go through, no matter if you're, you know about spirituality or not, right? Then what the, propo the, the proposition would be today to actually, okay, that's not you. And that's if the soul is really, if the mind continues, all right, what we're proposing is that's not you. That's just the experience you went through, right? You won't die with the body. You were alive before the body was, was formed. So in the, that's the awakening of spirituality, in a sense. Okay, okay so like, that's why the gospel, if you, if you think about love thy neighbor, love your enemy, all those things come true. The bathrooms are locked in back. Come on in, yeah. You can just come the bathrooms are locked there, so you have to come here. Okay, awesome. Actually, they have a key over there. So yeah. But that's fine. So, so in a sense, you see that way? So the ego we can, can be, in the, uh, I think in, in the, the way I talked about the ego today, the ego has been demoted a little bit to deal with this specific situation of, uh, of the, 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 the flesh or the experience with the body, right? So that's kind of, uh, kind of the, the idea, right? So in, we were, what we're trying to do now is to uh, raise the awareness of this um, mindful element that we are, so, right? Sure. So the way that I understand correct if I'm wrong is that we are not the ego because we are not created to live in an ego. We see was we were created as an image of Jesus, right? We created to be love, respect as an image of Jesus, and that's why we are not the ego mm -hmm. because we are supposed to be. Yeah, that, that's the that's the best. Right? Yeah, 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 he's the model for us. So, so Jesus is the, in a in a sense, if you think about Jesus, um, the way we perceive him, so you would see that his life was not lived in the ego. Like for instance, he went through the ultimate sacrifice because his body was completely. Think about how he was punished by the work he did. Because the ego of the others. Exactly. So he was he and and he well he 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 proposed a completely different lifestyle, where we would think about. The beings love thy neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Uh, care about the, the, the well-being of all those around them instead of the in putting as a secondary thing the material the material world right as a transitory world. So he shipped he flipped to say, but my my kingdom he went as far as saying my kingdom is not of this world. Translate to today's word like I'm I'm be, me talking to you right now and saying to you, my world is not yours. It's not this world. I come from a different world. It sounds crazy, right? But that's what he said. So he's absolutely, he lived his entire life with the perspective of the real world, this world of mind and concept, right? In the vast majority of us on earth, we live opposite. We live much more tied to the, this experience right now, to this world we live in right now, right? So he was the extreme, he's the model for us because he, he gave the example of uh, a life fulfillment, right? Completely different approach. Most of us, is very difficult. I don't know about you, but I struggle tremendously sometimes to disconnect from the bills you have to pay, right? From the money. 
So and sometimes many of the decisions we make are based on the the the, the, material. the material life we have right now. Uh, and I think, but eventually, I think what's going to happen to us is that if this is true, and it's, I think it is, eventually we're going to live more and more connected to this life that never ends. And it's going to be obvious to most of us the moment we discarnate, the moment the body stops working, it's going to be that moment of realization. Oh, wait a minute. All that was gone, and now I am this? This is going to be a moment all of us will go through, if this is true. right? Eventually, our bodies will stop functioning, right? Start functioning. It happens to everybody so far. <laughs> so far, as we know, all human beings around eventually got to a point where their bodies stopped functioning. Right? We don't have eternal life in the physical realm so far, right? So far, right? I, mean, I don't know. But it happened at a certain moment, our bodies are going to stop functioning, right? And then what's going to happen? Either one or two things. Either it's over and it's, it's gone and nothing else happens, right? And that's it, right? Or, or boop, we continue. And the mind will somehow still be working and the body will be there. And if I think that's the case. And if that's the case, in a single moment, all, then you're forced. Then this whole blah, blah, blah of the spiritual life and so on becomes not blah, 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 becomes your life. You're there, standing in your body right next to you, and you're standing and aware. Then I'm asking you how many bills you pay. Then all the things you put so much effort, uh, your body, your experiences, your resources, all the stuff you did, What's the value of them? Uh, so, so that's you see, that's the question we're all going to go through. If this is true, if this is what happened, right, right. And the problem is, only bad thing we're going to have is that the ego. If we didn't tame it, if you didn't tame the ego, it goes with us. If you're afraid of spiders, <laughs> even though you're, you th because it's not in your body, it's in your mind that fear will go with you, right? You're going to wake up on the other side, and you're going to carry your ego with you. goes with you. If, you. if you didn't learn to tame it, if you didn't learn to you know, balance it out, if your fears of a relationship or your fears of all, all the things that came from the bad experiences you have on earth, if you didn't tame them, because they are not in your body, they're in your mind, you wake up out of them. And that's, that's the situation uh, a lot of people find themselves waking up on the, on the other side if they didn't tame the mind didn't learn to develop this inner life balanced. That's what you said. The, the real treasure is not outside, it's inside. Right? The real treasure is not outside. Richness is not doesn't come from whatever is in your possessions, but whatever is you carry with us was inside of you, or in a way of saying it's your mind. So in a way, the mind is the most important thing we have. We don't know about it. I don't know, we don't know about it. The mind is truly everything. Everything. So that's why the gospel is spend a little bit of time there. Put some value there. Don't forget completely about the material life because you have to deal with it, you have to go through experience. But this is what's gonna be. This is what you truly are. Right? And this is a little awareness of the ego, so for us to touch us on uh, Okay, I think with, with that in mind, so we're going to move to, here in our group, we're going to actually do move to uh, do our meditation and our uh, passes. But uh, if you are online, so um, if you're watching this, so we suggest you have a nice music and do a little meditation for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And uh, so we would uh, complete uh, the work we had for us uh, today. And thank you guys very much. And uh, we're now finishing our recording. Thank you very much. <laughs>